On behalf of the Professional Baseball Strength and Conditioning Coaches Society, I'd like to welcome you to the PBS CCS podcast. I'm your host, Chris Messina. guys welcome to the pbs ccs podcast we're doing a little something different today we're gonna flip the script and myself will gilmore is going to interview chris who's been hosting this for a year now uh so chris why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself will first off thank you for reaching out for doing this it's not something that i really want to do be on the other side of the camera Uh, i'm a little nervous about it but we'll get it done i appreciate you reaching out uh, with that being Sports. said, my name is Chris Messina. I'm currently the AA strength coach in the Red Sox organization uh, up in Portland, Maine with the Portland Sea Dogs. Beautiful area. If anybody ever gets a chance to come visit, it's, it's one of the best places you can ever be, especially in the summer. Um, growing up, I went to a school just south of Buffalo. I grew up about 45 minutes south of Buffalo. I wanted to be a math teacher in high school and, uh, and a baseball coach. Didn't really plan out or play out too well for me. Um, My senior year, I decided I was going to be a chem engineering major. My first semester of college, I went to the SUNY Buffalo um, as a chem engineering major, and I hated it. Um, I'm a big math science guy, but um, that was a little bit too much math and a little bit too much science for me. Um, So I transferred to SUNY Fredonia, where I grew up. Uh, I did my undergrad in exercise science there, played a little bit of baseball, um, but we didn't have a strength program there. So I did a little bit of personal training, but didn't really get any experience strength and conditioning wise. Um, From there, I went to grad school at Salisbury University um, out in Salisbury, Maryland, about 30 minutes from Ocean City. They have a team in Delmarva, Um, so small plug. Matt Nine is the head strength coach there. He won strength coach of the year. Um, if you get a chance and you're in Delmarva, reach out to him. The guy is incredible. He'll be very accommodating, and you'll learn a ton from him just in one day. Small plug, like I said. Um, <laughs> so I started there when I met him. I just met him one day in the weight room. I was lifting, and he, he said, hey, you want to volunteer? I said, I got no experience, but yeah, sure, I'll, I'll come in, volunteer. And uh, So I started working with the freshman football team my first semester um, in that winter I got certified and so in the spring he let me have my own teams Uh, so I programmed for swimming and diving men's and women's and that was the first experience I ever had programming Um, don't really know if I was doing it right probably made a ton of mistakes just you know all rookie stuff but it was fun I got to learn hands-on throw me in the fire and and roll Um, and I think that's a great way to learn like I said so Matt Matt really helped us out there um, while I was at Salisbury, I interned down at TCU in Fort Worth, um, and that kind of put me on the path of, of where I wanted to go in this profession. Um, Zach Dakin is down there. The guy is incredible, and he had a little bit of baseball experience. Matt had some baseball experience, um, and that kind of pushed me towards working in baseball. I went back to Salisbury for my second year. I was a GA. Um, and then after that, I started in professional baseball with the Pirates organization. Uh, I was in the Appy League with the Bristol Pirates. Uh, if you ever want to talk about good baseball stories, the Appy League probably has a ton of them from a ton of different people. It's very, very interesting. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because it was my first year in pro ball, and I didn't know any better. And then now I'm in Double A, and looking back, it was like, man, there's some interesting stuff going on out there. Um, so I spent one season there, it was seasonal, and then from there I came over to the Red Sox, um, which is where I am now, my third season here, and uh, I'm loving it. So Pro Bowl has been very good to me. Like you said, I've been hosting this podcast for the last year, um, and I've met a ton of good people, and, and uh, nothing but respect for everybody in this field, man. That's awesome. Sounds like you've had quite the little journey in baseball so far. Yeah, man, this is my fourth year in Pro Bowl, but uh, I've seen a lot, met a lot of people, and um, this podcast has definitely helped open me up to new people in the game, and 
the ideas that are floating out there and the people that are helping our athletes are, uh, like I said, it's all good people and, and all good things for the future of this, this profession. So how did you come up with the idea for this podcast? Um, I mean, I'm a big podcast guy. I just okay. I listen to podcasts myself and there wasn't really anything out there baseball specific. Um, you can listen to football, soccer, hockey, basketball, really anything, but there wasn't much for baseball. And so the president of the PBS CCS, Brendan Hutman, was the head strength coach with the Pirates when I was there. So I had a little bit of a relationship with him. Uh, I reached out and told him, hey, I want to do this. I made two sample episodes. I sent him the episodes. I, you know, I was like, I'm really serious about this. And we went through a whole series of creating a committee of strength coaches um, and just going through some interviews and making sure, okay, you need to stay in this lane, try to ask this, ask that, reach out to these people. Uh, I think more than anything, they were just testing how committed I was to it. Um, and that was probably, that was in January. And then the first episodes came out in August. So from January to August, it was just prepping, getting everything ready, making sure we're going down the right path and, and, uh, convincing them that I was in this for the long term. And, right. um, from there it's, it's just been rolling, man. Everybody that I've reached out to has been, been more than willing to be on the show. I've had two people tell me that they couldn't do it and it was legitimate reasons. So everybody okay. else has been, you know, let's roll, let's get it going. Um, finding time in season isn't always easy. So I try to <laughs> record a bunch in the off season or when I have, you know, some downtime, but I try to knock out at least one per road trip just to keep me on pace. So, um, this would Very be, nice. this would be my one for this road trip. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, based on your conversations over the last year, have you gotten a sense of where strength and conditioning and baseball is headed? So when you sent me this, I, I really had to sit down and think about it. Um, I don't necessarily know where the future is in the sense of maybe programming X's and O's, all of that stuff, just because everybody I've talked to is, has their own twist on things. Um, in general, we're all kind of doing the same basic stuff, you know, squatting, hinging, pushing, pulling, carrying, um, you know, soft tissue stuff, all that stuff. We're, we're kind of doing the same stuff. Um, but everybody has their own twist, which is cool. That's in my mind, that's awesome that, um, people are trying different things and if it doesn't work, you discard it, you go somewhere else. And so I don't know if there'll ever be one future, like best program in baseball. Um, but I don't know if there should be either. You know what I mean? Then right. it's not as exciting for the field. Um, with that being said, like I said, everybody I've talked to is, is a great person and is, is very open-minded to talking shop um, and sharing ideas. So in that aspect, um, the people that are taking care of the players, the strength and conditioning coaches, are all pushing for the same thing, taking care of their, their athletes, getting the best out of them, giving themselves every day. Um, so I think we have the right people in place to push this progression as a whole forward in baseball. But I don't necessarily know where that future is in terms of specific X's and O's, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're saying that the theme is more so caring about people, how you treat them, how you deal with them on a daily basis, more so than three by five, three by ten, what you're doing on the floor. Bingo. Because you can have that program set up and then you end up in Bristol, Tennessee and <laughs> <laughs> you got no weight room and one med ball and, and you got to figure out what to do. Um, exactly. So like I said, it's more just we got the right people in place. People are pushing the field and, and the importance of this field is kind of the big theme that I've, I've heard from other people. It's just five, 10 years ago, strength and conditioning was just looked at as, as you know, nothing. And now managers and front office are really putting stock in the people that are taking care of their athletes. So we're moving in the right direction in that sense. Awesome. What advice would you give to a graduating college student who's looking to get into the field? And conversely, is there any advice you would tell that person to ignore? Oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to have a I'm going to have a grad student 
shadowing me here in our next road trip, which is actually exciting for me. I've never had it. He's a kid that I had when I was a GA. He was a ball player. Um, and so for me, advice would be reach out. Um, there are a ton of good people in this game. I know I keep saying that, but I, I, I genuinely mean it. Um, and he reached out to me and said, hey, can I shadow you for a game or for the series? And I said, you can come the whole series. You can stay in the hotel with me. I want you to get the full experience. So if you can, reach out, try to get the experience. Um, and if they won't let you come in and you know see how everything works, at least they'll talk shop with you and they'll answer your questions for you. Um, so if you want to know what baseball is like, talk to somebody that's in baseball. Um, advice to ignore. <laughs> I don't know if there's necessarily anything that I'd say here. I, I think you got to kind of figure things out for yourself. Um, something that someone tells you might apply to you and it might not apply to me the same way. Um, so maybe just filtering out information, you know, make sure your sources are right. Um, and, and I'd say maybe not just take advice from just anybody out in the streets. If they haven't experienced baseball, then, you know, you might have to take that with a grain of salt versus somebody who's been in the game for a while. So maybe just keep a filter on what advice you take in more so than anything specifically not good for you. Right. Yeah, definitely make sure you're taking care of your sources. Yeah. All right. So you said you're pretty big in the podcast. That got you on the idea of doing this one. So where do you go for continuing education? Uh, what are your favorite resources? So I'm a big reader and I'm a big podcast guy. And in Portland, that's perfect because we have many bus rides that are 8, 10, 12 hours. Um, so if I'm not sleeping on the bus, I'm listening to a podcast or reading. Um, so for me, podcasts, I have a ton of them. And with continuing ed, podcasts or reading, I try to mix in like a leadership motivational type one, strength and conditioning slash work related, and then a for fun. So I'm going to name a ton of these. And I'm sorry in advance, but they're all useful to me. And like I said, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt on advice. Listen to them. Don't listen to them. <laughs> um, the West Side podcast, I love Louis Simmons. I think he's absolutely brilliant. Um, he's got, I mean, if you listen to him, there's a lot of things kind of repeat. And those are his core values and his core beliefs. But they work. Um, so, Louie is the man. And if you've never listened to the Louie, uh, specifically on the Joe Rogan podcast, that's going to open your eyes to who Louie really is. Um, the Central Virginia Sports Performance Podcast with Jay DeMeo, big fan. Um, Jay's just genuinely like fascinated with everybody he talks to, so it's, it's fun to listen to. Um, the Physical Prep Podcast, that's Mike Robertson's um, Iron Game Chalk Talk with McKeefery. I just started listening to the Just Fly Sports Performance within the last year. I think you actually recommended one of those to me, and I listened yeah, to it. Just from, Fly. Yeah. The guy from Cal. Yeah. Yes. So from there, I've been listening to that one, knocking those out, and he's got like really, really good questions, really good um, information, and good coaches on there. So that's a good one. Um, so those are all my strength and conditioning. Um, for fun, I listen to Sword and Scale. I don't know if you've ever listened to Sword and Scale, but it's like a true crime podcast. If okay, if people start listening to it and they they're like, "All right, wait a minute," he actually listens to this. Just, just don't judge me on it. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's an interesting podcast. It's things that you never really thought happen in real life, and okay. they do, and it kind of opens your eyes to just maybe I don't know the people around me as well as I think I do. Interesting. Um, it's just don't judge me if you start listening to it. And then uh, the other one, I think I've talked about it on here before, is Coffee Break Spanish. Um, just trying to learn Spanish. It's relevant in baseball. Um, so that one's been good for my Spanish. So I know that's a lot of podcasts, but it's a lot of different options for you. If you don't like strength and conditioning, you can listen to true crime podcast episodes or Spanish episodes. Yeah, you got to mix it up a little bit. For sure, for sure. So, like I said, podcasts and books, man. I got <laughs> I got a ton of books, too, if you want for fun, strength and conditioning or leadership, but um, maybe start at the podcast. Well, is there one book 
or resource that you've recommended to other coaches or a player the most? <sighs> that one's tough. I'll give you one for each category. How's that sound? Okay. Leadership Perfect. or motivational, probably extreme ownership. Um, most people have kind of read that one nowadays. It's become a little bit like mainstream, but it really does apply. Um, strength and conditioning, my favorite one is Never Let Go, Dan John. Um, I think anything Dan John writes, I, I relate to. He just keeps things simple, and you're you're reading it, and you're like, he's right. Like, it's just so easy and so simple, but it just it works. So anything that he writes, I get my hands on and read. Um, and then for fun, um, my favorite book of all time is The Alchemist. So I want to say okay. The Alchemist, but I'll throw another plug in. Uh, the Keys to the Batter's Box, Sean Powell, the AAA strength coach with the White Sox, wrote it, and it's incredible. Um, it's just a couple years of him just having dugout talk with the Bat Boys, and they're like high school age kids, and the conversations that he has are just absolute gold. Sean is really, really funny, and um, so I would say if you want to look at like the funny side of baseball, just check that one out. It's like a one bus trip read it's really really funny so i'll give sean a little, i'll give sean a little plug there i'm trying to get him on the show to talk about the book um but he's a busy man so we'll <laughs> we'll see in the future if i can yep. get him on about it awesome all right so moving into more of the uh the travel essentials when you're going onto the road what do you put in your travel trunk so we have um, adjustable power blocks, the adjustable dumbbells, um, bands, all sizes, big bands, little bands, the mini bands, um, a vest, a TRX, um, and then I bring a bench with me as well. And we can get a pretty damn good session in with all of that stuff. I mean, truthfully, you can get a good session in with just about anything. Oh, and med ball. I didn't say med ball, but um, there's a med okay. ball in the trunk as well. If you if you got body weight, you can get in the session with body weight. If you got a, just a vest, you can get in the session with a vest. What you know what I mean? Whatever it is, we can get a session in. But I think with those, we get a lot of good stuff done um, between dumbbells, med ball, vest, a bench, and bands, TRX. We knock it out pretty good. So, so this is a a big minor league baseball thing. I'll set up a scenario for you based on that traveling gym that you bring with you it's a sunday day game on the road so you don't have the gym um previous pitcher from the night before needs to get his workout in can you give us the process of how you go about setting up that workout and what are you going to do with him of course yeah so um in double a triple a big league so from double a up here we have lifting cards for the guys um so i'm going to take his card I'm going to follow it as closely as I can with the um, with what I have. So he's going to run through activation. He's going to run through core, um, which the mini bands and the regular bands come in play there. Um, and then we're going to roll through his, his workout. So if he's got squats that day, he can goblet squat. If he's got RDLs, he can RDL the power blocks. Um, if he's got, you know, different lunge patterns he can put the vest on and do lunges um like i said we can pretty much knock out anything with this trunk so if if he's got you know some sort of squat a corrective and then um, some sort of hinge we can make it work if it's got to be broad jumps or vertical jumps or banded broad jumps so be it if it's uh even like a kettlebell swing you can take the power block and do swings with it um if you want to do elevated step ups, have him stand on a on a step and do some step ups. Um, if it's a day two guy and he's got a side, he's going to do the same process: do his side, do his his shoulder program stuff. He's going to activate, um, do his core work ahead of time, and then, like I said, we got the bench. So if he's benching, so be it. If he's got push ups, put the vest on, do the push ups. He can do rows with the bands or the. Uh, the power block or the TRX. Um, if we got an area, we, we can do pull-ups. There's a lot of uh, places that you can find to do pull-ups. Um, it's funny, I actually posted a picture from Altoona on my Instagram the other day and somebody commented on it 
and said, you can do pull-ups on the roller coaster out in right field. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't ventured out that far, um, but I 100% believe it. That's, that's the beauty in baseball, man, is you really have to think on your toes um, and get creative with your workouts. And that's what I'm telling you, man, is, is the strength coaches in this game just know how to adjust on the fly. And that's a huge part of the game is being able to adjust, constantly adjusting to weather, to schedule, to travel, um, extra innings, late night, rain delays, whatever it is, you have to be able to adjust. Um, and you're limited by your creativity, man. You really are. Um, like I said, we have the essentials in the trunk, but if I need to, I have the ability to, um, to be creative and find things that work for us. If, um, I have a good story for you. I don't know if this is okay, going to cut into perfect. one of your yeah. questions. Um, but we were on the road and Clubby had a shopping cart for uh, loading and unloading the bus. And there's a hill okay. for the bus to come down. Um, this isn't a player story, but the coaches and myself, we went to the field and we didn't work out that day. And... We were like, let's put the power box in the shopping cart and do sprints up the hill. And, <laughs> and it's like, all right, well, whatever. So you put the blocks in there and you do hill sprints with a, with a sled, so to speak. Um, <laughs> and we got it done. You know, it was a good workout. We're sweating yep. hard. It was, you know, it's summertime. So sun's out, getting a little tan going on and everything. But you're, you're really limited by your own creativity on the road. Um, ideally, you can get in the gym, and most of the other guys will let you come to their gym and use their weight room. But like you said, Sunday day game, you got a kid's game, 1130, get to the field at 9, stretch and roll. Like, There's not a ton of time to get over there when you have other things going on as well. So limited by your sure. creativity. Yeah, you really got to think outside the box, especially at those lower levels. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I learned that real fast when I was in uh, Bristol. All right. Well, Chris, are you ready for a little fire round? I'm ready, man. I, I'm This one I am a little bit nervous about um, <laughs> because I had time to prep for the other questions, but let's see what you got. Okay. First off, who has been the biggest influence on you in strength and conditioning? I got three. I know you said the biggest, but I, I'm a big categories guy, so I'll break it down into categories. Pro ball, uh, Joe Hughes with the Pirates. Um, when I first started, he was kind of the guy who showed me the ropes, um, and he's always two steps ahead of you. He knows what's going on. Um, he'll put you in a scenario just to see how you react, and then after the scenario, he'll say, well, did you think about this detail? And you're like, I, I didn't. Um, but now I will in the future. So Joe is my is my pro ball. Um, college setting specifically, Zach Dakin down in TCU. I mentioned him earlier. Um, I never really truly told him how much I appreciated what he did. I was kind of the awkward, quiet intern who was just taking everything in. Um, but when I'm quiet is when I'm learning. It it you know it kind of comes off as oh he's not paying attention or whatever. But I was soaking everything in, and then when I went to back to grad school as a GA, I was able to apply what he had taught me. Um, so I never really told him how much I appreciated it, um, but he really was a huge influence on who I am. Um, and then in general, just overall, Matt Nine down at Salisbury, like I said, he gave me my start. He saw me in the weight room one day, just probably doing curls or who knows what, and said, hey, come under my wing, come learn the ways of strength and conditioning, you'll do well in this field. Um, here's your shot. Show up on Monday. Awesome. And I was like, all right, I, I don't know anything, um, but let's roll. Let's do it. And uh, super high energy guy. Like I said, if you're in Delmarva, you get a chance to go over to the university and speak with him. Five minutes in the room turns to two hours in the room of just talking shop and, and the energy in the room just, just rises when he's, when he's rolling. So he's always looking for people to talk shop with. So if you're in Delmarva, Matt is your guy to talk to, but those are my, my big three um, that have had a huge influence on me and who I am now. Perfect. That's awesome. Number two, if you don't have a barbell, what is the one piece of equipment you would use to work out? Uh, I'm inclined to say probably kettlebells. Um, I've been using a lot of bells lately, swings and presses and, and all of that stuff. 
Um, when I ask people the question of one piece of equipment, in my mind, it's barbell. Um, if not, and I want to, you know, do everything I can, it's kettlebell. Uh, and then we went to Altoona and they had a reverse hyper there. Okay. And <laughs> that one might be my like sleeper essential piece of equipment. <laughs> um, but universally I'd say, yeah, barbell would be my choice. If I don't have barbell, I'm going kettlebell. Um, but don't sleep on the reverse hyper. <laughs> All right. Number three, what is your biggest accomplishment personally or professionally? Uh, per personally is definitely, uh, getting married. My wife has been an incredible, incredible, um, person for support for me. We've been together eight years in July, um, which is coming up pretty soon here. Um, but yeah, she's just been there through it all with me. Uh, she lived in Spain for nine months and, and so we know the distance thing and, when I got into pro ball, it was you know it was either her or I wasn't going to get married. This is a tough life to uh, to bring somebody into uh, who doesn't understand what's going on. And so we've had many sit down talks of this is what it's going to be like. This is what we're going to go through. Um, if you're not okay with it, like we need to you know split this now. And she's been supportive the whole way. And um, you know, like she's another person that I've never said, you know, never truly expressed how thankful I am, but I am thankful for everything she's done for me. Um, she takes care of the dog when I'm on the road and, and the house and goes shopping and cooks. And it's, it's incredible, man. I, another piece of advice, just find a, a good support system, um, and don't let them get away. So for me personally, um, us getting married was, you know, the best day of my life. And every day since then has been the best day of my life. She's, she's a rock star. If you ever meet her, she's a rock star. Um, professionally, man, I don't, I don't know if I have anything. I, I, when I ask this, I think back to, uh, Morgan Gregory's who he said he believes in fluid success. So he doesn't have a goal. And then once he gets there, he's like, well, I, I did this. I don't, I don't have anything to prove now. It's more of, okay, I have a goal. I get there. I have a goal. I get there. I have a goal. And then I just keep moving. So, Professionally, I don't know if there's anything that I've done that <laughs> that's overly spectacular, um, but maybe someday I'll have an answer for that. But right now, I'm just gonna keep keep chugging along and hopefully get to where I want to be someday. There you go. All right, next one. If you weren't a strength coach, what would you be? Well, I wouldn't be an engineer. I found that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, man. Uh, honestly, I'd probably revert back to my original plan of of uh, math teacher slash slash coach of some sort. Maybe I'd sneak in and, and run the weight room too. Um, but I think it's just in our blood, man. Strength coaches, we just want to help people and, and educate and um, make an inf uh, make an impact on people. And I think that's kind of where I'd be. It's, I I like math a lot. Um, and I think being in a high school setting and helping kids of that age um, take something that most kids don't like. You know, I talked to my brother, he's 14, and he doesn't like math. Um, but when I'm home and he's like, I need help with math homework, I'm sitting there just like, oh, my God, this is so exciting for me. And he's just, he's looking at me like, why do you like math so much? <laughs> and I'm like, it's just, just focus on the homework, you know. But I'm able to right. help him with his homework and and you know he appreciates it and i think that's just in all of our blood as strength coaches is just we like to help people any way we can so if i if i couldn't be in the weight room i'd be teaching math somewhere coaching on a baseball field definitely all right and last but not least would you rather win a world series ring or the world's strongest man oh man wow that's a major curveball that hits me right in the feels too, because um, you know I like strong men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so tough. Um, I'm inclined to say the world's strongest man. I think okay. there's a lot of good effort, and um, you know that's kind of the pinnacle of of the work that we do is is winning the World Series, um, and it would be very rewarding to win a ring. Just you know, for anybody, just what we go through in the minor leagues and grinding it out and 
um, you know, the long bus trips and the, the no gym lifts and the peanut butter and jellies and all that stuff. So that's very rewarding, but um, that takes a whole team effort. And I think strongman is very um, you versus the weight. And so if you were able to master that and be the world's strongest man, that, that goes to show, you know, a lot about who you are in terms of um, just your mental capacity to, to, you know, put yourself through some pain and, and come out stronger on the other side type of deal. And plus it looks cool when other people get to see you towing a, a, an airplane or whatever. <laughs> like, I just <laughs> yeah. watched the world's strongest man. And I'm like, these guys are incredible, just absolute monsters, like pulling airplanes and throwing rocks and just, there's just something about it. That's, that's cool. And kind of takes you to a different place. So I'll say world's strongest man, but that is a very good question. <laughs> that's awesome. I like it. Well, Chris, that's all I got for you. Appreciate you letting me flip the script on you a little bit and, and uh, let us see what you've gained over the last year of these interviews. For sure, man. It was a lot of fun. And uh, now I know how everybody feels on the other side, so I can have a little bit of empathy and say, hey, I was in your shoes very recently. So uh, <laughs> appreciate you reaching out to me and, and getting me on and doing this, man. It's been a fun year, and uh, I'm looking forward to another year and another year and another year after that of doing these interviews and getting the information out. We got unbelievable coaches in this field, and uh, I'm looking forward to the future for sure. Very nice. All right, everybody, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. I wanted to say thank you again to Will for reaching out and hosting and doing this. Um, it wasn't something I was planning on doing, but it was pretty cool to be on the other side of the microphone. So thanks again, Will, um, for reaching out way back in December and setting this up with me and getting it done. And uh, I think it turned out great. With that being said, that concludes also our first year of the podcast. Um, I wanted to say thank you to all the guests that have come on and taken time out of their busy schedules. As most of you know, strength coaches in baseball are pretty busy, so it means a lot to me that all these coaches would take time and, and speak with me and uh, and put out the content that they have. Um, also, I want to say thank you to all the listeners. Um, I, it's been a great first year for me and for the podcast, and I can only expect it to go up from here. Um, and all the listeners are a big part of that. So thank you to everybody that's been a part of this in the first year. and. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and the next year and the year after that and the year after that and so on are just as good or even better. Uh, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll talk to you again on the next one.